lights, camera, action. And here we are today. Tarek, how you doing today? I'm doing all right, man. How about you? I'm doing good, man. Can't complain. Could have complain, man. We up here at the lovely Fresh. Mm -hmm. Finding some shade, man. Enjoying life. Enjoying the good festivities. Let's see, man. I'm going to get right on into it, man. All right. First thing I'm going to ask you is, what was your biggest dream as a kid? Hi. My biggest dream as a kid, man, to be a big rapper. All you right. know what I'm saying? Just, I just wanted to rap, do music, you know, uh, provide for my family, man, and just really change the uh, change the trajectory mm -hmm. of music around here in East Texas. That was my first dream I ever had, you know. And I ventured off into some other ones, but yeah, yeah, that, that was the first one. Who inspired you to be to do music? It was actually my brother. It was actually my brother and his homies, and man, it's they still got music to this day. That if you play it, you won't know when it's made. It's timeless, mm. and it's 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 organic, man. It's it's so organic. It's so tireless, you know what I'm saying? But it's not to a point where it's like, man, turn that stuff off. Right. It's like, no, nah, hold on, cause like we need we need some more like that. Mm. And my my brother, he eight years older than me. Well, one of my brothers, he eight years older than me. So I used to just sit and I just listen to their music. I listened to their songs and I thought it was fascinating. Like, damn, I heard the voice. But on the song, it just it was just mesmerizing, man. You know, I couldn't figure out everything back then, so it was it was a big feel. Like, man, I I want to do that. I seen how I was, and I seen how other people look. You know, look at their music and stuff like that, and, and how they how they rock with it. And I was just like, I want that too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I even even back then, I feel like I had something to say. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that my that's my. My first influences, man. Then the rest came with, you know, cell phones, and MTV, and VT stuff like oh, that. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah, but the old classic stuff, man. We used to have back in the day when we, you know, especially um, with the, the like 106 in Park. 106, yeah. AJ Free, <laughs> yeah. On everything, Big Tigger down in the basement. On everything. It was, oh yeah, but I say it was a whole. Like you say, it was a whole. It was like a safe place for people to go to really be out and like be themselves. You're right. Right. Let me add to this about being a musician. How do you yeah. stay? How do you stay organic? How do you not follow the trends and start talking about what everybody else is talking about? A lot of free time to myself. Uh, I try to enjoy it for me, and I dip off and I dip in in so many different uh, genres of music mm -hmm. that even if I try to be myself, I can't because I've enable myself to be influenced by different other genres from rock to to classic or to country to everything so whenever i do make music i'm like okay i can i can see little little mm. little dibs and dabs of influence in that and mm. sometimes i play my music to some other people that's like that too and they be like Cause that's the beatles cuz i be like i know <laughs> i know but it sounds other though you oh know yeah what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah so uh and a lot, of, like I said, a lot of a lot of personal space too. Like if the kids gone or my girl gone or you know even back in the day, my mama gone or some stuff like that. Find a time and space where I just I party by myself and mm -hmm. I enjoy myself. Cause I know if I can enjoy myself, then the other billions of people on this world or two or three people out of the ten or a hundred gonna feel me and they're just gonna rock with me. You know what I'm saying? So. I just always kind of looked at it from that angle. I want to ask you this: What a lot? Of, I think myth is starting to get bigger and bigger mm -hmm. as the thing progress. I mean, one thing I want to ask you is: How? What do you? Why do you think a lot of people don't love themselves? Mm, I think it's so many different. Uh, it's so many different answers, man. But I do think one is self recognition. To even know that you like alive on this earth, to even pinch yourself like, damn, I'm, I'm here. Mm -hmm. We can't leave. You know what I'm saying? Like we only got one life to live. You feel me? And I think it could come from self-esteem. It could come from people not being uh, involved in your life. And I think it starts as a child um, coming up. Who was who was around you to let you know who you are? How you love yourself, you know what I'm mm. saying? Like I thought I loved myself until I seen my girl love her kids, and I was like, damn, my parents ain't love me like that. Mm. And I see the difference. I'm like, ah, huh? 
okay, now what about if I would have grew up 28 years, 29 years of that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Of, of who, who, who would I have been? What was the mistakes I wouldn't have made? The roads I wouldn't have gone mm -hmm. down? Only because I thought I loved myself, but I really didn't the way mm -hmm. that I needed to be. And I think mm -hmm. people love themselves to a certain degree, but don't know exactly how much they can love themselves. So they just crash out, mm -hmm. do crazy stuff, or don't don't have the confidence, don't have that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I didn't have I didn't have people in my ear to engage me, but my my nephews, my cousins, and stuff. I'm there for them because I know how they feel, mm -hmm. and I see how bright they are as as we grew up. And I'm halfway like, damn. <laughs> I did, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's cool though. It's a labor of love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that that's that's a part of it. Yeah. One another thing that I know is that some people don't understand is like I know some people I know they're looking for like their parents to be a certain way, uh -huh. but they also don't think about how their parents were raised. Were raised. They don't exactly. think about it like that. Exactly. And that's something that I learned growing up too was, damn, I wanted them. I wanted them to be that way. You know what I'm saying? But understanding their story, it's like. Y'all did the best y'all could. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a lot of people. And, that's, and I think that's it's a racial thing. It could be a cultural thing. It could be uh, an ethnicity thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. As well as an individual thing. So, um, I'm going to fight you right, bro. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, 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 it's on a mission, bro. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, man, I, I say, um, man, I got lost. Well, we was talking about how people want their parents to be a certain oh, way with yeah. their love. And, yeah. like, you got to think about how they was raised. Yeah. And the beautiful dance about that is I think if both people open their ears and both and give their time to a space, I feel like that they can merge. Because mm. as now, I'm, re I'm reteaching my parents. You know what I'm saying? At this age, I'm reteaching them. And, and it's up to them to learn. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't want to at first because it was pride and ego. Like, damn, I should have been teaching you this. But, yeah. you, but you didn't. So that's one question I want to ask you. What's the what's the difference between pride and ego? Pride and ego. I feel like one major difference between pride and ego is that pride keeps you from doing things, and ego starts that shit. You know what I'm saying? Ego, ego is dangerous, and pride is dangerous. But I feel like both of them is like cousins. They like first cousins. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't have one without the other. If one do this, if they both do this, then both got to come down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it can be negative if you treat it wrong, if you don't go about it right. Mm. But if you go about it right and you, you really use it efficiently, then you can go, you can go far. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. One question, another question I want to ask you, what's the difference between love and lust? Oh, God. It's a big difference. You can love to love somebody, right? And that's when you get... Fatal attractions, you get uh, if infatuations. Um, lust is the flesh, the shallow things. You can lust diamonds. You can mm -hmm. lust uh, fast cars. You can lust uh, nightlife. You can mm -hmm. lust that individual. But to understand the ins and outs, to unconditionally be there mm. to love something to love that person is to involve and take everything with it because if i if i lust you i don't want i don't want none of, i don't want none, i just want what i want from you right. i don't want none of that but if i love you i take every single thing that come with it you know what i'm saying and once you cross that line then that line is crossed you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah i feel like that'll kind of sum it up yeah, because a lot of people say that love and, like, especially pride and ego and, like, love and lust. I think some people get them confused yeah. between lust and love. And like, yeah. I'm like, I love you, but, like, no, you love that shit as a fat ass. That's it. <laughs> That's it. If that if that ass, if it slides off, if she wakes up and it slides off, if it wakes up and everything that you love about this woman is gone, that you lust about this woman is gone, you going to stay? Mm. You going to keep continuing to talk to her if your wife lose her legs? Your girlfriend lose her leg, what you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? You would tell her in her mind, you would tell her you love her. Either you know or you didn't, mm -hmm. or you know, vice versa. Cuz Leg's gone, she gone. He gone. Was it love? No. 
maybe could have been there, but it was the convenience of that person that made them stay and made them do what they do. And that's mm. another, I think convenience is another form of lust. You mm. know what I'm saying? Never thought about it like that. It's, I think it's another form of lust. Because I can get it when I want it. I can get it when I need it. It's the excitement, it's the mm. thrill. But if I can't get it, how am I going to act? Mm. If I can't never get it no more, mama, and I'm going to stand by my word, am I going to still be there? You know something, not, not to be funny, a friend of mine told me a story. I mean, working at Walmart together, he had told uh -huh. me, he said, I was, I was like, why do you cheat? Uh -huh. He had told me, he said, the reason why I cheat is because I can always get it at home. If I get it outside, it's just, that's just extra. <laughs> Hey boy, say I want my cake and, and, and eat it too. <laughs> yes, man. Yeah. People yeah. with that line, bro, I ain't been. I was like, damn. But I mean, he has a point. Right. But I mean, like you said, that also boils down to love and lust. Right, right. Because it, it comes with, uh, what's that word? Um, integrity. Mm. You know, you're going, you're going, what is the person doing for you? Nah, it, it may come to a point of time where some things could be valid. You know, everything is situational. Mm. But uh, I will say, lust is a it's, it's a drug, man. So is love too. If you can, if you if you if you function, if you treat it, if you steer it in the right direction. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't mean want to ask you. Um. Well, it's a it's a it's a parent question. Okay. Okay. Why are single mother looked at in a negative light, but the father's not? Ooh, man. I think that's a long line of cultural balance, uh, imbalances mm. um, in uh, viewpoints. Because, like you, like our, like a guy, I can have six kids and be out here uh, 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 doing my thing. Mm. You still get toes up on. Woman gets six kids. Good luck. Four kids. Good luck. Three kids. Good luck. You might find that guy, but might not be the guy that you want. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like it comes with the music. It comes with the movies. It comes with the uneducation about it all. True. Um, which causes what we have already systemically um, everything is kind of set in a place I don't think it's right you know what I'm saying but the two fine lines is it that you know men our genetic DNA is to be fruitful mm. is to be in abundance right mm. so women receive we give so the act of receiving the submission unto a man is like, okay, well, how many men have you did this with? Mm. Your soul is speaking. You got, okay, you got two, or three, you got, you got this many, but it took, I know it took more than this many times. Maybe even more people. Mm. There's, there's a cleanliness about it that's, you know, women, you got to go in them. Men, if we on the outside, we give, so I think that kind of takes the play of uh, hmm. men. We just, you know, our genetic, our kings. Look at the kings that was before us. They had many wives. Yeah. Queens don't have, well, unless in our history doesn't say queen had many husbands, hmm. right? It's the king, and I and I think that transpires into our culture today. Just say, okay, well, man, he can have. He can have it all, but she can't. Mm. And I think, in a way, that's good because women are sacred, bro. Women yeah. are very sacred. And I think it's a very important job um, for women to understand that and to know that that maybe in this part, it's not going to be accepted. Mm. And for sure. good reasons, it shouldn't. Because if a woman is home, if her body is home, if her recreation is for home then that's where we need that it not true. everywhere else true and I think if we look at it like that then I think men would chill out as well and I think women would take more pride in their mm. position 
do you why do you think why do you think some people don't look at women as like this sacred person? Because I think a lot of men just saying like, oh, she just well, I'm just trying to hit hit and quit and dip. Music, movies, homies, still the same. Still the same. Oh goodness. <laughs> it goes back to our culture, man. I was just about to ask you about say I was like, what is culture? I mean, imagine like even with us. I mean, think about it, like we said, it's just having all these kids and doing this. You gotta have all these tattoos. You gotta have all these chains and things like mm-hmm. that. I'm trying thinking. A lot of people who have a lot of money don't dress like they got money. Ooh. You would never even know they had money. They yeah. walk. Yo. Bill Gates walk through here right now. Who wanna know? This. Hey, that's Bill. Elon Musk. Hey, don't he kind of look like Elon Musk? Like, don't he? You know what I'm saying? This going, we going. Yeah. Yeah, but. It might be, might not. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he got like the most normal clothes. Got the most normal clothes on. He got the most normal clothes on, man. Yeah. He ain't walking around here with chains. He ain't walking around here with Gucci shoes on and, you know, pulling up, you know, thick with his homies. Nah, he, he ducked off. Because they look at money as a tool. Mm. We, look, we look at it as a trophy. But come with it. I mean, I can have all these hoes. I can have all this. And go broke trying to do so. You know what I'm saying? And, and mess up your family trying to do so. Because we don't... I mean, I think it all comes down is we don't know no better. You don't know what you don't know. We don't know what we don't know. We got, we, we fight when it comes to being here in, a, in America, man. Systematically, we're about 300 to 500 years behind. Mm. We are. Not one, two, 365 times 500 times 400. It's a lot of days, man. That is a long time. That's a lot of knowledge and generation that has been passed down that we ain't even begun to scratch the surface of yet. Mm-mm. And our people perish for lack of knowledge. We do perish. I know a lot of people, when they're like their parents die from them, them trying to like keep the house and maybe kind of like rent it out so they want to just sell the house, take the money. Mm-hmm. Then by that money, if you don't know how to use that money after you sell it, that money's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. And then you back to square one. Because a lot of us don't know what a trust is. Mm. We don't know certain things. We don't know the system. We too busy trying to fight the system. When the system can be used and be put in place and we can win with the system. It might not be our system, but it can be used. And our culture kind of fights that. And we perish perish because of that. Our our kids, our women, our minds, our families, our generational wealth. That shit gone. And sometimes it never gets established. Never does never gets established man but um i think culture is culture is like, like we say it's what what a group of people agree on it to be correct that's what it that's what it comes down to mm. you know like in my culture it was like in, in my culture in my household man any you could do whatever I got in a relationship one time, and, I, and they they family culture was to eat all together at a certain point of time. Mm. So I ain't never I ain't never seen that before. I didn't know what to do. I was nervous. I was, I ain't know I ain't know how to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And at that point of time, it hit me and was like, even then I said, you know, our culture can be very diverse. It can be, and certain things can be interwoven. Um, into our, our, our culture. And I think culture should be looked at. We need to put it up underneath a microscope and say, well, really what it is. We can change culture. Oh, yeah, Just because somebody say it don't mean we got to carry it out. Don't mean it's right. True. I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, even just with that simple thing, just eating dinner together, a lot of folks don't even do that. Mm-hmm. They'll get their plate and just go to the room and shut the door. Disconnection. Disassociation. It happening every day. It happening every day. And we don't know. It's part of the system. Yeah, because like I said, I think we all band together and have like a, like you said, we have an understanding, even looking under a microscope, we have an understanding of like, what do we really want to achieve as people? That's it. But I don't think, no, I don't think nobody wants to, for one thing, I, I think a lot of us are just too powerful. Mm-hmm. They don't want to admit that we're wrong. Right. And be like, okay then, I'm messing up because I'm not having an understanding of what really needs to happen. That's it. That's it. So, the, so one question you got to ask yourself is, what is your, well, what can I ask you, what's your definition of a good father? My definition of a good father. 
My definition of a good father is a man who takes responsibility in himself first. Hold on, man. Okay. You know, a man that takes responsibility in himself as a man mm. to see what he has done, what he has created, either by hook or by crook, and then say, well, this is my vision for me, and how does my family fit in? How can I put myself, how can I put my family? Because men, we submit different. Women submit one way, but men, we, su we submit a another way. Mm. When we submit to our women and we submit to our families, it's, it's through protection, through providing, through, through actually seeing them go higher places than us. I want to see my woman and my kids go places that I've never been before and that I can't. You know what I'm saying? I see what you mean. And I think being a good father is being there, listening, understanding, learning again, relearning. Because when you teach somebody, you learn twice. You, you know do. what I'm saying? So it's to be in it for the long haul and then the, to turn back the hands of time and put the mirror in front of them and say, you know what? I know nothing. Mm. I thought I did. But the world ain't the same as 30 years ago. It's not. My kids gonna grow up and say something. Nah, man. Nah. But maybe in their time frame, it is. And I think being able to be very efficient as a good father at the end is gonna make you a great father. Yeah. I got a quick question to ask you. I like to ask people this question. Mm -hmm. what, whenever, whenever you were raising your kids, and the way you're okay, let me this. The way you're teaching your kids everything, did it help you understand your parents better? For sure. Man, you know, raising my kids made me cry at night sometimes. I ain't gonna lie to you. Because I seen the lack. Mm. But I seen I seen what was good, I seen what was bad, you know. And I, I felt my my parents' pain of like, damn. I see where they come from. And even though I, I would love to them to have done a whole lot more, I feel their pain. Mm. How would they know? YouTube wasn't around back then. Mm -mm. Google wasn't around back then. It wasn't. They just been dipped off in a little corner slot in Tyler in West Tyler, Texas. And that's all they knew. That's all they knew. That's all they knew. Now, I can't lay it on them because they could have ventured out. My pops, he had plenty of chances. Mm. My mama had plenty of chances. But that's when it comes to, it circles back to loving yourself. If you neglect yourself, you neglect others. True. So, um, I think, what was the question again? Um, whenever you're teaching your kids, what oh, yeah, had to yeah, make you? Yeah, yeah. So, teaching them, it made me understand that I, that my patience, like my patience, my understanding, it has made me better with myself. I love myself even more. And I see, I see it through my, through my woman first. Mm. Cause she's pure love, man. Just, she just oozes it. So even sometimes, be like, man, how do you love like that? Cause I show what it went on. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I, but I, I see that that's her. That's her heart. Right. Can't nothing change. She's born that way. You know what I'm saying? So she has enabled me to teach these kids out of love, out of patience, out of concern, and through that I get the best results. True. And I say, oh, oh, it it, re it repairs me. True. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it repairs me to the to the utmost. And I see the difference of my parents raising me, how I was raised, mm. how I want my kids to be, and how I want my grandchildren to be. Because my grandchildren is going to grow up according to what I taught them. True. You know what I'm saying? So if my grandkids messed up, I know I messed up somewhere. Mm. And I, I don't want that. I don't want to leave room for that. I can see that. I can see that. I just wanted to ask you... Hold on. There's a question I wanted to ask you. Um. Damn, lost the question. I, it, it'll, it'll, circle, like it, it'll, it'll circle back to me, bro. Um. Uh, oh, why do you think some parents live through their kids? Woo. Insecurities. People see us, mm. right? We see everything, but people see us too. And as people, I think we're genetically made to call other people out on their stuff before we call ourselves out. Reflection. Reflection. So, how can I put it? 
So take your time, man. I didn't, I didn't get that chance. You look at your kids, like man, just, just like, just like the old OG hating on the little homie. Mm. I'm 50, I'm 60. He just not getting the opportunity that I just got two years ago, mm. three years, ten years ago. And I was in my 30s, my 40s, and my 50s, and he's 16. He's 12. Mm. I can't do that. I ain't even checked they self. That woman or that man ain't even checked they self. Like, well, what's the greater cause, though? What's mm. the bigger picture? You know what I'm saying? I think parents want to live through their kids. The negative, the, the wrong way, right? And to, you know, to control them and to say, well, it could, it could be a degree of love, mm. it could be a degree of respect. But I think parents live through their kids when they messed up. True. When they didn't get that opportunity, so they try to, they try to correct their lives and their mess up through their kids. Damn. They, they don't know nothing. <laughs> they wasn't alive when you made that mistake. True. They wasn't alive when you told your ACL you couldn't play ball no more. What about that child want to be a rocket scientist? Or an artist? Or if he just want to be a regular guy with a good nine to five? Mm. But you would never know. True. You would never know if you if, if you you shut that kid out. Nah, you're mm. going to do what I say. You're going to play football because I want you to play football. Mm. That kid going to grow up and resent you, cuz. If, if that kid don't go with it. Oh, yeah, but I feel like, especially if you're trying to understand. I, mean, a lot of, I got a lot of kids now. Like, I feel like a lot of them don't understand themselves. And I feel like, they're, like you said, if you don't got that group of people around you pushing you to strive for that or striving for you to be better, I mean, how how you supposed to know? Right, right. You don't know no better. You don't? I want to ask you... Uh, uh, the world's constantly changing. Okay. What's one thing you would love to change and what's one thing you wouldn't change? Man, I would love to change this forward movement and take it back. But we need to get back to the roots. Mm. Get back to the roots, man. Technology has uh, stripped us. Not even the whole world. Even even the most strongest of families, the most close-knit of families are falling off like Tetris, man. Falling off by the wayside. Cause there's there's no connection no more mm. and I would love to take things back to understand the true meaning of family time the mm. true meaning of, of auntie grandma granddad friend even big mama even big mama <laughs> we ain't having no big mamas no more oh, big no, mamas don't. gonna be shaking their ass in the next 10 years most definitely the, the, the cooked meals gonna be gone you don't even see that number four to eat that one. Everything has gone and left. I mean, hundred thousand, bro, thousands of years of progression has been set back in the last ten. No, well, definitely. How something that powerful can do that? Outer influences, man. Oh. One thing, not to cut you off. If this wasn't the question I wanted to ask, but this is the question I wanted to say. Okay. About parents letting television and social media raise their kids. Oh, my God. Throw away the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Throw away the phone, okay? I noticed that. I don't know if parents will have them have, like, you see it sometimes. The parents be out and they just have the kids just have the phone just playing uh-huh. on it. Yep. Three, four years old. Oh, quiet man. as can be. I'm going to tell you what. And my household got that in it. And I've seen, I watched it as a case study. And that is very, to them, to us, to our kids, they like, we're kind of like living gods. Mm. They don't know nothing. We know it all. We know what to do. We know what not to do. So they look forward. They look to us. But we can't do what a phone do. Oh, no. We can't do what technology does. We're just the the manager of it. But we're not the the product itself. Mm. So subconsciously they don't even know it but they like I'm gonna choose this phone over my mama so definitely and then whatever it tells me to do I'm gonna do it cause I'm influenced by it yeah. I like it it gives me a feeling yeah it gives that instant gratification instant gratification instant gratification and it messes up their mind and they uh in, a, in most cases it, it messes up the their, dopamine uh, isn't it 
Yes. Yes, very much. You get a constant boom, 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 boom. Every eight seconds, every five to eight seconds, you get a hit of dopamine. Mm. What you gonna do when you ain't got it no more? Slouch. Man, you gonna, ugh, either you gonna be sleep or you gonna be cranky. Your attention span is gonna wear down by the day. Mm. Now, even if you didn't have ADD or ADHD, you might have it. Mm. You might have it by the end, in two or three years. Because that, that kid's mind wasn't able to process it. And now his brain fried. His mind is gone. It might take that time or even more to remove this child, remove these kids from social media. Mm. Because if, it, if, if one person is telling you, son, don't do this, mm. but that kid say, well, 633 people and 254 comments say otherwise. Right. Look, mom, we got 20,000 shit. I don't give a damn about them shares. But I'm the, your mom. Fuck them shares. <laughs> I'm your mom. Now, now this child has to. I think they like distance themselves. Like, if you think about it. For sure. For sure. Now, this this child is, is a product of this now. Mm. Fuck, I need parents for it. I got a phone. I don't need no parents no more. I got a phone. Tell me everything I need to know. Telling me everything I need to know. I'm telling you, man, man. I've, I've witnessed it time and time again. What a phone, what a child would do when you take it out the hands of that kid. Oh, they lose their rabbit ass mind. Boy, you might gotta post up them kids. Boy, <laughs> you might gotta start bobbing and weaving with them kids. Man, they go crazy, man. They go wild because it, it's not like Game Boy Color. Mm -mm. It's not like GameCube. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? This is a whole other level. Oh, yeah. About that. I always think that one of the greatest inventions ever made was a cell phone. Especially when it gets like the top and apps and shit. That, yeah. this dude right here, has messed up a whole lot of folks. Yeah. And it's messing somebody up right now. They don't even know. They on their phone just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. scrolling. I deleted, I had to delete Facebook. I'm even myself. I'm tempted to delete Facebook books. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be posting my videos on Facebook. So I can't be deleting it, but I, have, <laughs> but I also I have to have awareness of why I'm on it. That's it. That's it. It's self control, and kids with kids taught me self control, and it let me understand how much free time mm. I messed up my whole life. How many, how many friends I wasn't supposed to hang around, mm. and I was at the club what I really was supposed to be doing. Mm. You know, when I was just chilling at the house, I was hiding the motherfucker. What I really was supposed to have been doing. Working on your craft and getting where you need to. Yes, working on myself. Right. Because when you had kids, you, a, a, a good person going to think, man, do I want my kids to be around these people? Oh, they did. But, yeah, but, but, I, but I think that's like the only, only thing we think that for, especially when you're in it. It's hard, to, it's hard to be, it's easy to look on the outside looking in, but on the inside looking out, you don't ever see it. That's why everybody needs space time to slow down. I mean, I'm an Aquarius, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm full-fledged Aquarius. I love people. I love conversations. I love this. But at the end of the day, I need myself. I need my corner. I need my time. Mm. I need to digest everything. And some people haven't did that in years. No. Constant, 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 constant. Like a child. Constant, constant, constant. Mm. Man, go, go over in that corner and have time out. <laughs> For real, go, go ahead, time out, man. Close your eyes, take a nap. That's so how I do it. My kids, take a nap. You tripping, cuz, take a nap. I don't want to hear about none of that. Mm. Just take a nap. No, you can't even have water right now. Go take a nap. When you wake up, you're gonna go it again, cuz right now you're being a harm to yourself. Mm. You're being a harm to your brothers. To your sister. I just had a daughter three days ago, four days ago. Congratulations. Appreciate it, man. So, there's a chain of events that's going on. And I gotta conduct that. I gotta orchestrate that. Mm. So when I tell my woman, no, nah, don't give him the phone. I know you want the phone, no, nah, don't give him the phone. Mm. His behavior is his his behavior has been going down because of something. And is and if he does this to his brother, it's gonna do the same thing because his brother loves him. Mm. He looks up to him. His brother gonna I can look at it, I can see it now. His brother gonna be able to tell him what to do. I'm not. I see that now. He'll listen to me. But he is his brother's keeper. And I want his big brother to understand that. Mm. So, hey, son, your little brother love you. 
he, hey, he, he, he loves you. He's only 13 months. But he's infatuated by you because you're his older brother. You're mm. not an authority figure to him. So he's going to listen to you. True. He tell you to jump. You going to ask how high. So I need him to, under, his older brother, to understand when does he need him to. Where does he need to jump to? You're the leader of you're the leader of your 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 social your your social. I know what you mean. Social you know bubble, saying? social group. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. You're the leader, son. So whatever you do, they gonna do. Mm. And if my daughter come up and say, "No, that's not right," are y'all gonna outcast her? Y'all gonna ostracize her? You gonna try to understand? Or you gonna try to understand? Because if the daughter's on our side, now we got a division in this family. Mm. And we all got to we all got to come back home and live with each other. I wonder why that is. Though. I wonder why some families like, oh, one siblings like, oh, you told mom and dad this. Now I'll say, now you the outcast. Now you outcast of the whole social group. Because somehow hatred has seeped into it. Somehow there's a, there's a, it's us against you. Mm. Oh, no, your family. They didn't get like a lot of individualism? Yes, a lot of it. And phones are one of them. Friends are one of them. Man, look. Sleepovers don't really happen like that no more. They don't. You get what I'm saying? Ain't nobody outside playing. Ain't no no one's outside in these streets playing basketball, playing football. You get what I'm saying? Scrapping your knee and shit. Ain't nobody <laughs> grow up with that. And these kids, they not so they don't they don't understand. It's, it's 10 of us on this block. A boy from the other block came and stole your basketball. What are we going to do about it? Go get the motherfucking basketball back. go get that ball back. <laughs> I got back, though. You know what I'm saying? I got back, though, bro. Now, later on in life, we might grow up and be cool, but for right now, you took my homie ball. Mm. You stole off on my little sister. Now, the homie's like, well, that's my homie. He dive in, I'm diving in. Nah. Ain't no bikes left outside no more. You don't see no basketball in the middle of the streets no more. Mm. Ain't no tip. I can't even tell you the last time I drove down the street and seen a basketball go hanging outside somebody's house. Oh, you 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 definitely don't see that anymore. Cause no one's outside no more. Everybody's inside on the video game on their phone. So they so in a way they don't know no better. Mm. So now we got kids that don't even know how to be kids. They already grown. They live in grown up lives. Actually, I asked a question to Miss um, Hyde about it. I asked her, I said, are kids losing their innocence at young ages? Oh, the, the minute they put that cell phone in front of them. Mm. The very minute. The minute they start playing games that doesn't contribute to they, they, their makeup. Or their growth. Their growth. If they influenced by that, bye-bye. Have a good time. Have a good time. And, and, and I, I, I know that. My stepson, he was introduced to Grand Theft Auto at three. And he ain't been the same since, brother. He has not been the same since. Mm. Now, he talk about hood stuff. Killing, you know, just just things that are, are on this video game. Just, just watching somebody play. It. Just mm. sitting there and watching somebody do it. And now he's like, he's different. You get, his innocence is gone. Because now he makes fun of people running over people <laughs> to get uh, stars. You know, know what I'm saying? And I can even be funny, but I think one thing is I noticed that um, I think in the society we live, I think death is not that big of a deal to a lot of people in this society. No. No. God is coming, and he is on his way back. <laughs> death is coming. God, God is coming, he on his way back. Because now... I'm probably, even Satan probably be like, what's going on? I don't know what the hell going on. Like I, said, before, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Uh, of nothing. They, about to, they go out there. They go up there and just shoot somebody and just run off. And then some people, some people just walk off. Like, like, not like, like ain't nothing happen. It's just nothing happened. They go back to the hive. He's like, man, I ain't had no ice cream in the minute. Let's go give me some ice cream. Okay. And carry about that damn out You just wet up the whole block. What? The internet, bro. Ain't nobody in that corner to you wrong. Mm. You wrong. Big mama ain't telling you you wrong no more. Oh, yeah, about that. Like you said, Big Mama's gone. I lost my Big Mama. I know is that. Oh, well, then when I ask you, 
Um, how come it's like there's only that one family member keeping the family together, but as soon as they pass, the whole family disappears? Because like, that one family member keeping all family together, but as soon as that family member passes, everybody disperses. Because they wasn't united together. Mm. They wasn't united to begin with. It was that person. But the family wasn't family. Family didn't. It was a family. It was just the influence of that person. Man, my brother died. My brother got killed 2012, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody was at his house. Everybody was always at his house. Everybody thought everybody was family. But as soon as he died... Everybody's gone. He wasn't family. We were just united by that one person. It's not even a family, is it? Not even a family. It never was. Mm. Everybody was just there for convenience, bro. Convenience, convenience, convenience. I don't want to be alone. I want to be a hold of something. It's like gang culture and apparent after the OG die. Who want? Somebody else want OG spot. Mm. Somebody else want that badass car OG got. Somebody else want to stick his bra. Mm. Mm. I don't want the bra. I don't want the car. Where his money at? And that's what happens in family. It's like gang culture. And that's 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 the problem. Because we're we're not entitled. We're not interwoven and interwoven as families. We're not. So one thing happens, one bad mishap, one breakup. You can go to this corner of the earth. You can go to this corner of the earth. I can come back to this corner of the earth and be fine. I don't have to deal with you. True. I'm not in no wheel. I wasn't in granddaddy wheel. I wasn't in big mama wheel. My dad don't fool with your mama. Boom. Now everybody got the same last name, but don't nobody ever got their telephone. I know it's that too. It's, it's, it's sad, man. But we wasn't taught that. We were. But I mean, you know, that's a bigger conversation for another day because we clearly see what happened. And it's just generational. Generational, generational, generational. Generation. But yeah, man, I, I think that's that's one of them, you know. Ain't nobody entitled to nobody. Don't nobody feel has pride. That's my brother, that's my cousin, mm. that's my uncle. Nah, man, they treat family members treat their friends better than their family. That's my homie. That's my bro. I'm your cousin, cuz. <laughs> what you mean? I'm attached to you for life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your mama, my sister. Mm. Those things like that, like, man, cut the bullshit. I don't care what happened in those previous generations. Right. I don't care what happened because Stoney done, 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 done took off on JoJo. They family. Y'all can do that, but don't let nobody else come in and do that. I see what you mean. Don't let nobody else infiltrate thousands of years. I'm like, nah, it, 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 it's no pass. Let's see here. I got one more question for you. Mm -hmm. I, a question. I feel like we're going to have many more conversations. <laughs> <laughs> well, two things. Well, there's someone else I want you to meet. Her name is Donna. Okay. Y'all told would be great to have okay. a conversation with. Um, what I want to ask you is, do you see your kids as a reflection of yourself, or do you see them as their own people? Both. They got their own ways of doing stuff. But I can see, excuse me, I can yeah. see uh, my influence. I can see my lady's influence. You know, I can see what the genetics are doing and what they are susceptible to do. And what <clears throat> can either enhance or demolish their uh, progression. Mm -hmm. And so I give them the free will. The things that they do, but the things that I see, okay, we we'll like on that. Let me hold your hand. Let me guide you. You haven't been here long. Mm. You only been here five years. You only been here 13 months. Shit, you only been here three days, four days. Mm. I've been here a long time. You know? And that's just how I look at it. But above all, the reason why I look at it like that is because 
I don't own nobody. No one owns no one. I want to ask you a quick question. Mm-hmm. Whenever someone, when a parent t- hits somebody with the, old, I took you to the rock and take you out. Ooh. That's that's them long nights talking. <laughs> that's them diapers. Ch- that's the, all them diapers talking. That's the frustration talking. Cause it, it is frustrating, bro. It is it is a challenge of challenge to raise kids to be in their lives constantly, even when you say, "Man, hold the baby with." I can't take it. I ain't got no sleep. I can't do that. Right? I got to get up. I got to do that. That's my responsibility. Correct. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and say it again. I, I, I was up at 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, no, you're fine. So I forgot. I asked you, um, do you see your kids as a... Ref- oh, oh yeah. no, no, no. I asked you about the... Um, they brought you into this world and take you out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, in a way, that's our ancestors talking. Mm. That's our ancestors speaking in the spirit to our kids. That's saying, forget this system. Forget all of this. It's me and you now. This is our genes talking. I raised you. I put them diapers on you. I fed you when you couldn't feed yourself. Regardless if I did right or regardless if I did wrong, I was there. So before these other people take you out, before you choose me over that homie that's not your homie, because we going to catch that fade for disrespecting you. Didn't, you didn't even know it, but I'm going to let you know. I wear the big drawers in this house. I'm your mama. I'm your daddy. I, tell you, I brought you in. We're tethered to something that pen and paper cannot just come in and cut through. Okay. We're we're we know when they say mm. and they make that they, they make that deal in blood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We blood brothers now. Right. Good. You came you came out my nuts set, good. You know what I'm saying? That's in your mind, you like, bro, what you what you mean? The disrespect. The dis- what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, I was there when you was born. You know what I'm saying? How? How dare you? You know what I'm saying? You gonna? How dare you? And and before I had kids, I used to laugh like, ha <laughs> ha You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now having kids, it's like this shit's serious. It's serious, though. You, we're trying to do something here. I want show, you know what I'm saying? It's, I feel like it's out of love. Because mm. if it wasn't shit, you would have been on me. That, that person wouldn't have been there to uh, to say, hey, look, it's, look, I brought you in. I'll take you out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, I don't know who my mama is. They found me behind a trash can. Mm. That's the thin, that's the thin line right there. That's that, that's that line. Because the parent, the parent go through a lot. It's, man, look, bro. It's certain jobs I can't take. It's certain things I can't do because it's gonna affect my child's upbringing. It's certain things both of us can't do. I got so many jobs available where I can go make twenty something dollars. I can go make thirty something dollars now, but it's gonna be a detriment to my child. So I gotta settle for the eleven dollars. I gotta settle for the fifteen. I gotta even thinking about, man, who the fuck am I gonna rob? Those things come in your mind where it's like, I love my kids. You know, I love my, maybe I should have waited. You know what I'm saying? Those types of things happen. Mm. I thought I should have waited. But at the end of the day, it's like, it goes back to God when he says, man, look, if you wait for me to, to exalt you, man, I give you everything in your heart. You know what I'm saying? Because God see you doing right. He'll see you doing right by them kids. He'll see you doing right by that child. Mm. Yo, yo, your parents that brought you up. So that's what that parent mean, man. I'll take you out there. Let my son get let, let, let my son get the trip. I'm gonna think about all them times. I might not mean it in that way, but I mean I'm I will beat your ass, son. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I will get I will show you something. You know what I'm saying? Out of respect because 
I'm, I'm passing the torch to you when I die. In my deathbed, my last name, and everything that I worked for, my face call, every single thing that I have set in motion, daughter, son, is going to be in your hands. I'm not going to be around all the time. True. So when I'm gone, I need you to hold this very carefully. Because if I don't, you're going to be somewhere right there in jail. Or you're going to be somewhere right going totally against what I've taught you and instilled in you. Because mm. I was here before you. I see and I know and I understand. All you got to do is look, read the instructions. <laughs> That's it. Read. All right, cool. Bet. Make a left. Yeah. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. Now, the rest that I don't know, that's up to y'all. That's up to you, your brothers, and your sisters, and your counterparts. Mm. But if I raise you in love, if I raise you in understanding, if I raise you in communication, then you will be with like-minded individuals because you're going to understand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to understand and you're going to know. So, if I taught you all of this and you still go against that because we fade, <laughs> you wasted my time. Your time? You wasted wait for no more time. Time, time does not wait for anyone. It don't. We, we wasted complete effort. If you were gonna be like this, girl, I can, <clears throat> I can drop them seeds. I can, I can put them seeds in your life, but it's up for you to water. It's up for everybody to water. There's a lot of dry minds out there, man. A lot of dry minds, man. Water them plants. Hey, <clears throat> I done spent 18 years. <laughs> 18 years is a long time. Putting them damn seeds in your Who mind to be seeds? like, and then when you still not doing right, I'm sitting there thinking like, well, damn, right. what else could I have done? Because I could have been anywhere else. I could have been in the oil field. I could have went back to school to be a lawyer. I could have did all this other shit that I wanted to do. But I set myself to a side for you to come and disrespect me. Little boy, you saying this? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, if you ain't in boxing classes, you might want to go. Because I'm finna, I'm, finna, I'm finna take it there. You know what I'm saying? And that's, I feel like that's just bloodline respect. And that's something that, you know, society society cannot do. Mm. I see a father and a son getting at it. I see a couple fighting. We, I had this was going on, but it ain't me. <laughs> They stay on bubble. You know what I'm saying? Because real talk. Look at the interview of the guy with Chick fil A. You seen it? No. Watch. I'm almost proud. Watch how this dad, this father, the, 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 the creator of Chick fil A, talks about God and how he runs his family through God alone. How he keeps his generational wealth turning with his kids through his generation. He's three generations deep. The myth is about about time that third generation is in, the family is gone. Because hard times create great individuals. Great individuals create easy times. Easy times create a, 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 a difficult individuals, however that quote is. It makes sense, though. You know what I'm saying? That person ain't having to come through no adversity. That person don't understand what it feels to sleep at night. Man, I've been homeless, cuz. I done been through the ringer multiple times. So I, I understand how I feel. Man, I'm not finna spend, I'm, I'm not finna spend $200 on them shoes. Cause I, I, I remember, I remember bathing. I, I remember sleeping in the parking lot. I remember brushing my teeth. I remember being kicked out of hotel parking lots. I remember all of them things. I remember, I remember so much more than, than this conversation can hold. So three generations in, they don't know that. Even the next generation, shit, they wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't understand. They wouldn't understand. But this guy, man, I don't man, how this guy, man, he preached a, he, he preached a sermon. He, he, it wasn't no interview, cause he preached. That, that guy preached. And he, and he shows what he does. When he's on, on on business trips, he got his grandkids with him. When he go and book in them hotels, in them business meetings, his kids are with him. Because now they don't have a disassociation. That's their life. They don't know about no Nintendo Wii's and all that stuff. They get into it. He's not even giving them a chance 
to steer anywhere else because he doesn't know this is Chick-fil-A. This is bigger than us. Mm. We if if us if, if us 10, 50 people stop, we built up something that if if us 10 to 20 people stop, millions of people, millions of people are going to suffer. That's a big way. Yeah, it's a big way. It's a huge way. But that's why there's systems into place, and that's why parenthood is at the God and parenthood is at the center of every single thing that we see. Brooks, where we at right now? Mm -hmm. What about if they would have stopped? What about if they want some? Man, fuck this. Fuck this. Where we be here right now? Nope. Will they be expanding into other places right now? Nope. But if we teaching our daughters to shake ass, that's not. Ha I guarantee you, that's not happening in his household. Oh no, in the Brooks's household. Like you said, they're never gonna get the chance. Never get. The, they never get the chance to. They might see it through somebody else's. But they're saying like thinking that's not the right way to go. It's not the right way to go because they've been wired to think otherwise. And if they do go that route, then that's just a black sheep. They might come back. To the truth, it might be a good opportunity in whatever they do. Because they have a better understanding of life in a different way. Exactly. Maybe they might come back and run this thing. Because they've been through something. They have been adverse. Now, okay, this is what we're doing wrong. We're doing good here, but this is what we're doing wrong here. This is another, mar this is another market we can tap into. And that's why people of uh, struggle, people of uh, that has, you know, there are lack of advantage or uh, uh, have been through more of a fire than the elites or, or you know, the, the people that's just running stuff. We have a, a competitive advantage. Well, a lot of people don't see it that way. We don't see we don't see it that way. Could be too busy being mad. I understand. It's it, it's hard to think when your stomach is. It's hard to be positive when an eviction notice on your door. It's hard. It's hard to, to think cool when your homie just got his fucking face blew off. You know what I'm saying? It's it's hard to think straight when your girl just just messed around with your boy. Mm. But those are the things that happen in our community every single day. It takes the men, a, a very huge amount of mental uh, mental dexterity to complete these odds and be something. Mm -hmm. And we have that to offer to this world. Our kids are a byproduct of that. True. They don't have all of it, but they have a degree of it to say. My daddy. I don't know. Play. Hmm? I don't know what they've been through. My mama don't play. My daddy don't play. My uncles don't play. And they told me to be in the street life. The street life. Come on, I need to come in. Yeah, fuck. Okay. I'm coming home. You be down. I be down. You know, that, that's, that light used to come out. I used to hear my mom at the train. She was never late. I said, you better not go past that stop sign. They used to, they used to pick on me. They used to call me street light. <laughs> a lot of them niggas dead. They in prison 45 years, 65 years strong. Life. And at the time, I, I, I resented my mama now. Because I didn't understand. I didn't know the world. I didn't know the world. I didn't know life. I'm sending them letters now. I'm writing them now. They calling me now. Mm. And now I can sit back and say, thank you, mama. Thank you, pops. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. I might go through the same generational curses. My kids might go through the same thing. But I'm right there. Because I understand. I'm not tapped out of society. I'm not tapped out. I'm right here. I'm out here every day in the making. I'm still in the field. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm still in the field. So I got your back, son. I got your back, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here. And I'm going to go through it with you. You know, until it's over and done with. I, I, I got you. Because I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm going to take them blows first. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to put myself in that position, too. That, that's, that's do good things and become great. You, if you do enough little things good, you mm. will become great. Right. It's the little things. It's the little things, bro. 
it's, it's the little things. 